We come to you with breaking news on this Friday evening as Mike Dana has re-signed in Kansas City for the 2024 season and beyond agreeing with the Chiefs with a three-year $24 million deal with $13.5 million. We have all the latest news about it right here on the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jace Andrews, and Mike Garofolo had the tweet that broke the news saying, the hashtag Chiefs have agreed to terms with offensive end Mike Dana on a three-year deal, source says. Another piece of Kansas City's defensive front stays put. This is exactly why you subscribe. It's Friday. It's 5.30. Me and Sam both want to go home, but it doesn't matter because breaking news happens and we got to cover it and we do it for you and we make sure that you enjoy it every time. Hopefully you enjoy it every single time. So hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Because whenever something happens, we're going to make a video. Doesn't matter if we're at home, doesn't matter if we're in the studio, something we put out as soon as possible. And Mike Dan is a big piece, so we're happy to get a video out to you right here. All right, Dana is a very big piece of this defense, and last year had a career year, having career totals in, or excuse me, career bests in tackles, tackles for loss, sacks. This guy was putting on the defensive clinic while Charles Omenahue was in his six-game suspension because, if you remember, Dana was not supposed to be the starter. Omenahue was. Got the six-game suspension. Dana popped into that starting role. You had Felix and Uduke Uzoma, who thought maybe he could step into a defensive end role. Well, guess what? Dana... Now, nah, he took that and ran with it. 50 tackles, 7 tackles for loss, 6.5 sacks. It was a really, really good year. And it's something that he has been doing for the past couple years with the Chiefs because it's not anything new. You go back to 2022, 5 sacks that year, 3 tackles for loss, 2 forced fumbles, 27 tackles. He's been a staple of this Kansas City Chiefs defensive line for the past couple years. And he fits in well. And to me, this is just a no-brainer. That's exactly what this is. I mean, you linked... You look at the defensive line from last year. You see how they produced. I mean, we talked about it before the year with Chris Jones and the holdout situation. We were all saying the defensive line was not going to be good without Chris Jones. They played one game without him. They were actually pretty good in that game against the Detroit Lions. Who was a part of that? Mike Dana, George Karloftis, Derek Nottie. They're all back. Every single starter on the defensive line for week one last year is back. And in fact, you even got Charles Domenehue back in here. Felix Uduke Uzoma will be in his second year. Will he have a more important role with the Mike Dana signing? There's a bunch of questions that I kind of got an answer to today. It's going to be filled with Mike Dana. I think he is the starting defensive end until Charles Domenehue comes back. I think FAU will get a little bit more of a rotation system this year. But overall, Dana's back, and after a career year, I couldn't be more excited. And if you're excited... Well, get down in the comments section and type his number 51 because Mike is somebody who I am very, very, very happy to have back on the squad and somebody that I truly think is going to continue to grow on the career year he had last year and produce even better numbers this year because, well, a minute he may be out for longer than six games in the 2024 season. So if you're excited, type 51. Let's give you a visual here for the defensive line and how exactly this works Derek Nadi at defensive tackle, George Carl Loftus at defensive end, Chris Jones defensive tackle, and then now Mike Dana, the starter at defensive end with Charles Omenahue, uh, obviously listed at the backup situation right now. I truly do feel like he will take over the starting job when he comes back, but I think that FAU might actually get a, bit, a little bit of a rotation. I know that we've talked about it throughout the show, but Omenahue is going to be out for, I have to think, maybe the entire regular season. You don't just come back from a torn ACL in the AFC Championship in week seven of the next year. That's not what happens. You don't have that happen most times. Now, we've seen Charles Omenahue both on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, saying, I'm going to be back quicker than anybody has ever before. Which is great and all, but the quickest somebody has come back is 11 months. So in theory, he comes back quicker than anybody before in 10 months. You're still talking a January return. You're still talking a December return. With that being said, that's exactly why Dana is a no-brainer. Your defensive end slot was a little bit of a questionable place this year. I mean, I was talking about drafting defensive linemen. I still think like a defensive tackle would be nice to get in this year's draft. But the ends, I love Carl Loftus. I love Omenihue. I think FAU is going to be a star one day. But I kind of start to question something now. Is FAU actually going to be something? Dana just signed for three years. Karloftis is here for another two years. FAU was a first-round draft pick. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with him now. It's just kind of 
an interesting move. I kind of always thought Dana would come back on maybe a one-year deal. Then way, that way next year it'd be Omenahu and Dana as the guys coming back and they'd have to choose one. Well, now, they're just not bringing Omenahu back in his FAU, the guy had come in. A lot of questions to be answered, but hey, that's the good thing when you have a lot of star players. Plus, you can also cook, put some star players and cook them up on prize picks right now, one of our amazing sponsors. And you can get a $100 deposit match by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS. Prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. And it's super simple. If you haven't played it before, here's all you got to do. You choose two or more players. You pick more or less on their prize picks projected stats. Then you choose flex or power play. Now, when it comes to the games tonight, we got some NBA action going on. I got a little two guy for you with Anthony Edwards Ant. I'm going the more on his points. He's been absolutely exceptional. And he's plays playing Devin Booker in the Phoenix Sun. So I'm going the more on Booker's points as well. I, I really do think this will be an offensive minor game. Both defenses are good, not great. And so I'm taking the more on both of the star players in this game. Uh, Booker, I think, will just be lacing threes and Edwards. And he's going to run right through Kevin Durant. Make sure you check it out at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. The link will be in the comments in the description of this video. Using code CLNS is how you get that first deposit match of up to $100. It's super fun. It's super easy. They've got loads of stat types, loads of sports. If you're not a basketball guy, baseball starting up. They got hockey. They got NBA. They got PGA. Pretty much any sport or stat type you can ask for. They got you covered. We'll have that link in the comments down below. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And using code CLNS, you'll get that $100 deposit match. Go check it out. We'll have it there in the comments. All right, Chiefs team needs. I think we sit here and think, okay, well, the defensive line, I don't know if it's a need. <laughs> I, don't, I think we're fine now. I mean, I think it'd still be nice to get one maybe in the later part of the round, a defensive interior lineman. But it's not one of the top four by any stretch of the imagination. You think about it. You got wide receiver that is, honestly, as the day goes on, as the week goes on, it's not looking great for Rasheed Rice, I have to be quite honest with you. And so the Chiefs are to think from an organizational perspective, they need some more wide receivers in here fast. You got Marquise Brown, and then it's Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore. I don't trust them. I don't. Left tackle with Wanya Morris. I don't know how much faith they have in him as well. Cornerback, obviously trading Legereus Sneed. And then running back. You got Clyde Edwards Alaire back. But is that going to be enough with Isaiah Pacheco, who I found out today is older than CH, apparently? Anyway. All right, let's look at the draft picks here for the Kansas City Chiefs because they can fill those needs in the draft. And I feel as though there's some good options all around. And I don't think they need to do too much on the defensive side. Round one, round two, three, and four are all their own picks that they retained. They have two round five picks, one of them being from Dallas and then a compensatory pick. Then the round seven pick via Tennessee in the luxurious Sneed trade after that seventh round pick swap. So seven total picks to kind of round out this team. Uh, I do believe Dana is probably going to be the last free agency move, uh, barring anything crazy happening like maybe the signing of uh, or a Tyler Boyd late in the summer uh, or J.K. Dobbins late in the summer. I feel as though this was the last big move they can make. Uh, kind of off the top of my head with their cap space issues, or not issues, that was kind of a freedom. They're right around at this point, uh, $12, $13 million left. $8 million, $8 million of it is going to be needed to use on the draft class. Um, like I said, there's some smaller guys they could get back but I don't see too much happening. This was the plan, though. I mean, Mike Dana was supposed to come back. We had been talking about him through the, throughout the entire week that it was a win, not if. It was a win Mike Dana was going to be able to re-sign with the Chiefs. Not if, win. Charles Goldman had the report. Everybody was saying, and now this defensive line has every single starter from last year's defensive line back for 2024, and we all know how well the D-line was last year. And Chris Jones, man, he's going to be in for some sacks a million this upcoming year. What's your confidence level in the Kansas City Chiefs defense on a scale from 1 to 10? 1 being least confident, 10 being most confident. Man, I better see some 10s because this defense is absolutely amazing. I know Jerry Sneed is not there, but your entire defensive front is back. Obviously, you miss out on Willie Gay, but Drew Tranquil is great. Your starting linebacker core is perfect. Trent McDuffie and Jaylen Joshua Williams will be great in the cornerback room. Your safety stay the same. Shamar Connor is going to be back for his second year. Brian Cook will be back from his injury. Justin Reed, obviously. This is a very, very good defense. I should expect to see a lot of 8, 9s, and hopefully some 10s as well because I truly can't think of a better defense in the NFL at this current moment. 
All right, we got the perfect Chiefs draft plan. Going to be having that link below. Uh, obviously, there's a couple of different things going on. We'll have that link and kind of talk throughout this entirety of what exactly is happening with that. But, man, it's a good day for a re-signing of Mike Dana. So, man, I'm glad we got this to you. Obviously, the Chiefs love to make signings late on Friday. You think about the Legere Sneed trade. That was late on Friday. You think about signing Marquise Brown. That was Thursday, but it was still late. Uh, <laughs> It's just an interesting time. Hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Appreciate all of you. And uh, for, for me and Sam, we're going to go home. Uh, peace out, everybody.